Hello everyone, welcome to the table. Today I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, World War II naval rule sets that I have. Questions I've gotten before have been like, what's the difference between some of them and which one would be better for what? So I thought I'd cover that a little bit. And I'll start by going over kind of General Quarters 3. So General Quarters 3, this is a miniatures based game. And it's what I would say is more on the simulation side of things. So you have like these rulers for measuring your distance in, in knots. So it's not necessarily inches, but you're basing it on the speed of the ship that you have marked down for it. It has ship data cards where you can track their, their damage, their weapon systems. And I don't have a lot of that present, but you also have turn gauges. So let's say you've got this here, a Yamato, and you want to turn based on, on your speed, and you get a reduction in speed based on your turning rate, you know, your speed and whatnot. It, it's kind of simulation-y, even down to gunnery. So if we look here at like a gunnery chart, here's the Kriegsmarine gunnery chart. So it takes into account your range the type of, of gun that you're firing versus the what its armor penetration is versus target type and then you got damage charts down here that you would roll on to see specifically what system is is potentially damaged and I don't know if I've got if I left the ship cards in here no I didn't but those are aircraft data cards but uh, this does have a sample of a ship data card. But basically, as you're taking damage, your ship data card has boxes that you check off. And I thought there was a sample card here. I'm not going to spend too much time searching for it. But, but the idea is, yeah, they're here. They're really small to see. But you're, it's got your weapon systems, and as you take damage, you cross off if a weapon was damaged, and, and different things. So it's very simulation-y, and it's very tactical in nature. So you're in command of individual ship, and um, depending on how versed you and your opponent are with the rules, then you could run three, four. I think I've played this with like seven ships, seven, eight ships a person. And if you have the time, you can totally make that game work. You, one person, if you have the time. I'm fortunate that I have a buddy I game with that has a table space large enough to accommodate large games. And if we have to play out a particular scenario four hours a day over a three or four day period, you know, just kind of meeting once a week, no problem. He can leave it set up so we can do you know larger battles with just the two of us. If you had more people per side running multiple ships, it'd go quicker. This is a game that uses like pre-plotted movement, which helps facilitate that because um, part of your turn, you're deciding what each what each ship is going to do, and then movement is all simultaneous. You just move your ships and check everything. So it's not like where. I move a ship and I have to wait for him to move something or I move all of mine and then my opponent moves something and that can sometimes bog down a game like this that's I'm not gonna say is overly complicated but because it has a lot of moving pieces having pre-plotted movement and in some cases pre-plotted firing is actually very beneficial also a game like this gives you an opportunity to decide what scale of ships you want to use oh there's some sample ships right there um, this game, I think, really shines. I think it was really kind of designed with like one 2400 scale in mind, but you could play that smaller. I have tried playing this with larger scale. Um, for instance, well, like here's smaller. This is something I've gone over before scale, finding that right scale, because with the naval gaming, Terrain to figure scale, I think, is a lot more important than, say, like a land-based World War II game. With that, it's a little more forgiving. You can play in 12800 scale, like bolt action or 15 millimeter, if you want to have you know larger battles. But with the naval gaming, this right here is 12400 scale. And these are models by GHQ. Uh, I'm not a good painter, so they're just kind of basic gray and some washes, but um, the scale 
kind of fits this on. You, know, you could play a pretty realistic game on a 6x4 table. Ships will eventually close in, but even with a game like this, the idea, and I've seen this with other games, is that you don't necessarily have everybody charge at each other. You're going to spend some distance away, miles. But see, depending on the size of your ships and your distance and the scale that you're playing, this is pretty close for World War II ships. But when you play uh, something, you know, when you start moving in towards like Victory at Sea, Victory at, yeah, uh, Victory at Sea is a 1 1800 scale. And this is a Yamato class battleship. This is the Musashi. Yeah, that's the Musashi, also a Yamato class. There's a big difference, right? So if I've got this size ship and another one right next to it, I only have that one. But like if I grab one of the cruisers, here's an Indianapolis. You know, this is an 1800 scale from that, from Victory at Sea. This is from the Axis and Allies game. But the scales mean that as the ships get larger, the closer they are, that this is not realistic. And when you have a game that's realistic-ish, simulationist like General Quarters, you want to have these slightly smaller scale ships that way your table to terrain scale is much much more believable when you play so that's an important consideration when you go more of a simulation route uh, this right here are top side mini ships uh, they come on a pdf and you can get them in one three thousand you can get them in one twenty four hundred and they originally were in one uh, 1800 but now they also have a lot of World War one and the World War two they all come in these different sizes so you can pick a size that fits for you and they're they're reasonably priced it's like 15 bucks and you get a hundred or so Navy US Navy ships and the art is really good so if you were starting out and you didn't know what scale you wanted to play in this is a pretty good option you can get like a, a US starter pack print some out and then move them around on the table in fact, here's some top side minis. This is uh, the company used to have their supplier ran out there. I don't know if they can find another supplier, but they use these tear resistant papers and then they were stickers and they gave you the base. So like here is the King George ship in that one 1800 scale, but in a top side mini style. And it's pretty reasonable in the, in the size compared to an 1800 miniature. But the reason I point this out is, again, depending on the kind of rule set you're looking for, the scales of ships that you want to use might dictate a little bit, um, you know, your ship size. Or if you really want to play in 1800 and you want to go with a more simulation style game like General Quarters 3, you're going to enjoy that a lot more if you have much larger table space. Because General Quarters runs on fairly realistic range measurements for things. So they actually have scales and those turn measurements and those uh, speed scales for different scale ships that you might play in. And so, you know, in 12400 scale, if I move a ship five inches, if I scale it up to 11800, I might be moving that ship eight or nine inches. So you can noticeably see the difference because as you scale up, the distances and measurements scale out too, which means you need a bigger table. So when you're trying to decide on what kind of rule set I want, you might want to consider this, the types of ships you're using. You can also get like the 13000 scale ships, 14800, 16000, and you do a little bit of research and you can see some ship size comparisons. Okay, but now let let's say you're you know still not sure or you know you you pick a, a size of ship you want to run on but you're saying I don't want something so complicated because the rules I'd, I'd say if you were going to look around I don't own the set of rules but probably the two that I see that people say are the most uh, probably the more complicated of the sea rules would be Sea Creek series I think they're on the fifth edition now Sea Creek 5 you can buy copies of it on War Game Vault or get it off the Sea Creek website. And I'm hearing that's like the top as far as complication goes. You're still running kind of individual ships, but there's lots of charts and tables that track a lot of aspects. I haven't played it. Some people swear by it. Some people say it's just too much. Uh, then right below that is probably Command at Sea, 
by Clash of Arms Games. Again, I played Harpoon, the modern, and when I was younger, there's a lot to it, but it was playable. I played it when I was like 15, maybe 14, 15. I figured it out. Played the basic rules, but it was playable. But I haven't played the World War II version, but it's you know along the same vein as that. Um, then you have what I'm told is maybe third in complexity would be like the General Quarters. So General Quarters seems to strike a pretty good balance, I'm told, between some of the more complex games and then some of the easier games. So really, that complexity and what's difficult kind of comes down to the individual, but those are the top three I would say people like as far as complexity, with General Quarters being pretty good. Now there's are, trust me, there's a lot of naval World War II rule sets you can find, and there's probably a lot that I've never seen and some I've heard of. I've got some on PDF on my tablet that I have, the rules, but haven't played, I just collect them. So your mileage is going to vary with that as far as the complexity. But I would say if you want something on the simulation side that's still a little bit easier, look for something called Naval Thunder. Again, that lets you run multiple ships on a side. And that one seems more forgiving with scale. I, I've played Naval Thunder with some the 1800 topside minis. I've also played it with 12400. And I think the game played... Uh, it was equally enjoyable for me. It really was, honestly. Uh, but it still has some detail with some ship data forms and um, tracking the type of gun that you're firing, rolling per barrel. It seemed good. I, I like that one a lot. So my, top, my personal top two games then would be General Quarters 3, with that one being the more simulation of the two. And then Naval Thunder, which has some simulation aspects to it, but it is a lot easier to absorb, learn, and get into playing right away. Now, a uh, question comes up, it's like, which one offers like land rules, aircraft? Well, General Quarters and Naval Thunder both have aircraft rules, and they do have submarine rules. Um, I think with Naval Thunder, they do the aircraft kind of more abstract, and what I mean by that is, you'll play it's almost like a mini game of having the carriers launch aircraft and you're rolling dice to see how effective that that combat is because in the type of uh, scale of game that naval thunder is doing is they didn't think it was realistic necessarily to have the carrier on the table and when you have battleships that are within gunnery range of each other you're trying not to get your carrier in that position in the first place so their idea is that your carriers are hundreds and hundreds of miles away and you're flying sorties out determining what the sorties do and then see who returns and lands and then the game that you're playing is the aftermath of the carrier sortie so um, I think I like that aspect too but General Quarters, Sea Creek, I'm sure those all have aircraft um, General Quarters does have some rules in there for like shore bombardments and things like that but neither one has a like a, a land warfare aspect in that traditional sense. That's where you would need to go to one of your other land-based games. This is maybe focusing on the convoys and the actions that get the troops to land and then you can play some other land-based game. So that's a couple thoughts that I have on my favorite games and then a couple thoughts on things to consider as far as scale that you want to get into. you got to be careful because it's really hard to own multiple scales because it's not a cheap hobby. It's cheap in the sense that you could probably buy a handful of ships and play out a rule system in different scales. So what I mean by that is um, what my friend started me on, because again, I'm not an expert at naval warfare or anything like that, but I just play games. But what he started me on was uh, Battle of the River Plate. So that's got the uh, Grofs Bay for the Germans. So that's one ship you would buy. Then you could buy an Exeter, Ajax, and Achilles for the British. And sometimes there's more ships involved depending on how involved of scenario you're playing. But if you just play like the basics like that, that's four ships you could purchase and then in different scales and play out some different rule sets to see what you like. And then, if you want to up that a little bit, you could purchase for later, you could do um, get uh, the Hood, Prince of Wales, and Bismarck, and Prince Eugen. So you have like more battleship type of battles. 
and then you could also do the same thing. So really, depending on how you go, the investment is either kind of low compared to some other gaming, but if you're experimenting with the different scales, there's still a little bit of investment in money. So that's why I was gonna suggest the cheapest way to go would be get some top side minis because they do have 1800, the 12400 and 13000 scale for you to kind of, you know, get some counters. You would print this out, put it on cardstock or something like that, but it would let you toy around with different scales for ships to see what you like. Um, this isn't the only other option. It's just something price-wise you might want to consider. Um, because if you then find a scale that you like and you decide to expand your fleets, then just like any other hobby, you're sinking in hundreds of dollars. And then at some point, it's really hard to say, well, you know what? Let me just switch scales entirely and rebuy my fleets in that scale. And now you're shelling out hundreds more. So take your time with it. There's no race. Now, for those who already play and collect, hopefully <laughs> what I'm saying makes sense. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, go slow. The thing is, you're going to really enjoy your naval warfare gaming. I, I really love it. Uh, and plus, this is just World War II. I experiment. The only, uh, there's probably a lot of genre. I haven't done like ancient with rowboats and, and things like that or World War I. I've actually thought about giving, giving a World War I a shot because limited aircraft, limited submarine and torpedoes, and the focus is really on the dreadnoughts and battleships kinds of thing, right? So if that's really your thing is gunnery, then maybe World War I would be an option to go with. But if you want the carriers, fighters, and things like that, then World War II is a good place to start. Okay, so again, this is coming at from the miniature side of things as far as tactical wargaming. But this is probably a little more specifically Victory at Sea from Warlord Games. This is just the quick start rules, and so the game is really designed to play kind of quickly. Sure, you have these cool data cards with, you know, the type of the turrets, how many barrels per turret and stuff like that. But when playing the game, um, and it's at this 1800 scale, it really condenses the table. It really condenses the table that you play on. And so these ships are shooting around, at, you know, seven inches, six inches, and they close really quickly. If, if this ship is moving at six inches and this ship moves at six inches towards each other, well, in one turn, they've closed a foot. And if you're playing across a six by four table and you start at the far edges of that table, okay, so they're starting at six feet apart, Next turn, they're only five feet apart. So the, they close really quickly at this scale. And so some, t when my buddy and I were playing, we're like, okay, it's a fun beer and pretzel kind of game, a great introduction to naval warfare, but some of the tactics in gaming don't really encourage the idea of keeping distance, using your gunnery to your advantage. But a lot of gameplay videos I've seen the people just rush at each other and then they're literally just just across from each other you know like this this is completely valid there's no real sense of scale from ship scale to terrain scale as far as being on the ocean and supposed to be you know 30 miles from each other um, I think some folks in comments were saying like when you had like the Bismarck and Prince Eugen engaging like the hood and stuff. I think the shooting at that started somewhere between like 10 and 13 miles away from each other. 10 to 13 miles. That, that's pretty far if you think about it. Trying to shoot and hit little moving things out against the backdrop of open ocean. Uh, I mean, that's to me is just pretty ridiculous. And to have that reduced to being just three inches apart on a tabletop really kind of kills that sense of scale. So, am I saying this is a bad game to get? Nope. But, as someone who's played, when I was playing it, it was like I just kept wishing for a little bit more detail, and I kept thinking, man, I wish I was playing General Quarters. Now, to be fair, had I never played any kind of World War II naval warfare gaming before, I would say, this would be great. 
The ship models are pretty good. You can paint them up. They look pretty nice. I know some people who like have extensive collections of ships really hate these bases. Um, I'm just taking it in stride. I'm painting them up and playing with them for what they are. And it's a game. And it's almost reminds me of like X-Wing, except it's World War II ships kind of a thing or, you know, Wings of Glory or something like that. So, um, especially because this starter box comes with rules, markers, ship data cards, and all the ships you need to play quite a few battles, this is a great way to start. The other ways that you go, you have to buy your ships from different companies, get your rule sets from different companies, and that can be a little intimidating too. But if you want something that's a little simpler to get into, maybe you have a younger gamer you want to get into stuff, this is a great way to go. It's got your ships, it's got your rules. Now, you can go either way with this. You could play this game with a ship collection you already have. So you have a simpler rule set and play with your 12400 scale ships and I think that'd be great. Or if you like the ships but want to play with a more complicated rule set, you could go that route too. So there's nothing that says you have to shoehorn these ships in with these rules and the two can never part. You can totally mix and match your miniatures with your rules if you want. Plus again, this is the quick start rules that um, I think a lot of people have problem with because it's the quick start rules. I have not seen the full rule book, so I can't tell you how much more simulation y the game feels with the full rules. I just know that me and my buddy were rolling, you know, six dice at each other, rolling several dice for blocks and whatever. Fun, quick game, beers and pretzels type of thing, but definitely lacking that simulation feel that some people want. Okay. Now those are miniature games and those are what I call the tactical level games where you're focusing just on the ships, they're lining up from each other and then they're sailing at each other and fighting. Another game that I've talked about has been this here. Oh, let me put some papers away real quick. This is not a miniatures game. This is a uh, board game. And someone asked, you know, about the, the tactical combat in this game as it would compare to say Victory at Sea. Okay, so Bismarck, move some clippers out of the way. Try to move, some, oh, I just knocked some, I was trying to avoid knocking stuff off the table, but I knocked it off anyway. Okay, so this is not a tactical naval World War II wargaming experience. You can go to Wargame Vault and you can find some games by a company called Minden that I would classify as kind of a, a hybrid they give you a rule set with counters that um, it kind of a reminiscent of like a, a board game kind of feel and miniatures kind of feel but like this game here is strictly not a tactical board game okay so this is focusing on a high level of operations so here's what I mean by that and I got some counters here to show you because I think these are from Battle of Denmark Strait, so it's my Eugen, Hood, stuff like that. So with this game, the idea is that the your kind of your primary focus is on the st strategy of moving task forces and groups around. I've only got a couple counters in here; the rest of the counters are elsewhere. But here is a map, and it's just composed of squares. Offset squares, which internet tells me offset squares are preferred to hexes when you play a movement game like this. So you're going to have a counter that represents a task force and it sits on the map like this. And when it's your turn, you go through a process of turns and you move a square. Square, depending on the game you're playing, scale could be like one square is 40 nautical miles, kind of a thing, 40, 40 square miles. Uh, turns are like four hours and um, when it comes around to you for a phase you move a square um, depending on your task force speed maybe you get to move two squares or three squares and then your opponent has a task force out here somewhere as well and depending on 
your mission, you're either trying to avoid his task force and get down to, say, this port to do something, and he's going to maneuver his task forces to try and stop you. Now, I just made that sound probably super boring, but let me tell you what, the operational level aspect of this game is phenomenally fun. It is amazing. Uh, I played a nice, really good game of the Coral Sea where we've got the Japanese trying to invade Port Moresby and you've got allied forces trying to stop that. So they've got assets coming out of North Australia and um, the surrounding carriers. And it was great. The task force leaves it so you have no idea what the exact composition of the task force is. And so you have to manage sending out um, scout planes and managing searches and seeing if your searches can give you exact information about a task force. And then once you've got the information on the task force, do you send a task force to intercept? Or do you send your aircraft carrier planes or land-based planes? And since this is the North Atlantic, this might be my Bismarck and Prince Eugen, and I might have some British task forces. And so I'm trying to maneuver my little guys to try and find a group of convoy ships. So maybe I'm going to maneuver to intercept what appears to be merchant shipping. And then the British players trying to maneuver stuff to prevent that from happening. It's actually really good operational game. So fun. I enjoyed that when we were playing that. And as I watched these battles unfold, it was great. Um, but there is a tactical combat aspect. But it is not anywhere near detailed as, say, even Victory at Sea or General Quarters. The idea with the tactical combat in this type of board game is really a means to resolve the tactical aspect so you can get back to the strategic part of the game. So I'm not saying all board games are like that, but this is one someone asked specifically about, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull that one out. So here, your tactical combat takes place on... A map that looks like I just bumped that camera sorry looks like so let me see if I can lift this up a little bit not too far out of reach but uh, here you're gonna take your ships and depending on if you're playing the strategic battle your ships will enter the combat map basically how they meet on the strategic map so if I've got my two German ships coming in say from the north northwest I'll put them in the northwest quadrant here and let's say the British came in from the east I would put them on this eastern quadrant and then based on some aspects like visual distance can we actually see them we might shift things around because let's say it's evening time I can only see a maximum of six hexes then I'm going to place them on their entry spots, but make sure we're one, two, three, four, five, six. The limits of visual sighting, because that's where they saw each other. And then, boom, the tactical aspect would be um, you have impulses that you play, and there's like 22 impulses or something like that. And then the speed of the ships will tell you when they move. So impulse five might say ships running at a speed of one can move. And then impulse six might be, okay, ships that are at a speed of two or three can move. And then that's where you as the captain are going to decide, okay, so where am I moving? The uh, Bismarck and the Prince Eugen. All right, well, we're going to move ahead one hex because it tells us we can move one. And then after movement, you're going to check gunnery. And then this is where things get abstract. So let's zoom in. Now, those other games, you're going to have ship data forms. Some games, it's just maybe a strip of information. Some games have nice, intricate ship data forms with gunnery data and hit points and things that you track. Here, things are not quite as detailed. Uh, you do have ship data forms that I have printed out. Oh, where did I put them at? I thought I kept them in here. I think I was rereading some rules, so I moved them. 
Well, of course I can't find them now. Well, bummer. Okay, well, I'll pull it out of here. Ship data. So here you have your ship data form. It's like this. Like I said, it's like a strip of information about the ship. Um, for instance, those are cargo ship transports trans let's get some combat ships here here we go capital ships so for example here's the prince of wales so prince of wales got its hit points um, tertiary guns that's primary guns some aa data hull points fuel so a little bit of data not very complex compared to say general quarters so this allows you to manage more ships at once than say Sea Krieg or something where really they want you to do like maybe three or four ships if you're kind of learning the game. Here we had, when we were doing the Coral Sea, there was like, I think at one time, there was like uh, 12 ships per person. And because it's kind of a, a board game feel, it was like, oh, okay, I'm going to move this group one hex. And then I move another group one hex. And, you know, uh, then the allies move one and they kind of move their different little groups of ships one hex and then it's like okay let's do gunnery so again you don't have complicated gunnery charts for a game like this if we look at a counter here um, pretty much all that you need for gunnery is here on the counter so for example I'm not going to go over everything, but gunnery, important wise, you're going to have your primary guns. Let's see if I can make that closer here. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. Uh, primary gun value, primary gun value. So Prince of Wales has a 9, uh, Hood is 10, Bismarck is 10, and Prince Eugen has no primary guns. I had to answer a phone call, so I lost my train of thought a little bit. Oh, but just so just the basics, right? You've got uh, the primary gun. I know someone might say, what, the Prince Eugen doesn't have primary? Mostly it has to deal with the size of the, the cannons firing. So the Eugen being a heavy cruiser, its primary guns are really the secondaries, which could be you know anywhere from 6 to 8 inches kind of a thing. And the primary, you're, you're looking at the larger guns. But essentially, it's you roll that number of dice, and then there's a few, just a handful of modifiers. I wonder if I can show that here real quick. There's just a few, just a few gunnery modifiers, and every dice roll of six or higher is a hit. And then you roll two dice, and it tells you the damage. So it's simple. So again, this is a tactical game. Yes, it has a tactical aspect to it, and it actually does have scenarios such as Battle of Denmark Strait, uh, depending on the specific game of Second World War at Sea, you could do Battle of the River Plate or you know all kinds of stuff, Coral Sea, Midway, it's huge, a huge selection. But it's a simplistic tactical system, more designed for running task forces worth of ships and not just two or three people. So if you're looking for a tactical experience, a game like this would not be what you're into, but if you're looking for a stra um, strategic level game where you're moving task forces around and then doing like carrier strikes and stuff like that this is definitely the way to go so those are some of my thoughts on the games that i have again we looked at three of the games i have um, but I have a lot more on PDF, and like I said, if you go to, say, Wargame Vault or something like Noble Knight Games and you look for World War II naval games, you're going to find a lot of options. Uh, even recently, I played Tokyo Express, which is almost like a hybrid strategic level, tactical level, where the strategic level, you're moving task forces around, but the task force is not one counter that says task force, but it's your individual ship counters that you're moving and then to do the combat right there on the strategic level map you know so there's there's a lot of in-between systems out there as well so take your time with it hopefully this has given you some information at least about the several games i have and maybe some considerations when you're looking for maybe a new game for yourself or just getting into it 
But otherwise, hey, as always, feel free to share your comments, leave your thoughts, ask your questions. I love discussion, and I will talk to you later. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye.